This is season number four. It marks several significant improvements and changes. First is the podcast title clarification. We are now renaming the podcast, Open Forum in the Villages, Florida, to make clear that this is a regional show. The show is not sponsored by the Villages. Second is a dramatic increase in the use of AI for the show. These include transcripts of each show. Please understand that there will be errors inserted by the AI that may not be caught before the transcript is published. However, this is a dramatic step forward. We will now include chapter markers for each show. The show's title will be one of the five titles generated by the AI. The show description will be AI generated. In fact, the show's announcers are now all AI voices, including me. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages Florida podcast. In this show, we are going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs and interesting folks who live here in the villages, to give perspectives of what is happening here in the villages. We hope to add a new episode most Fridays at 9 a.m. We have converted all of our shows to Buzzsprout. Of course, you can still listen to Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, and about 20 other podcast platforms. Your favorite favorite podcast player will still work. We are now a listener-supported podcast. You can become a supporter for only $3 or you can choose to pay more per month. Go to openforminthevillages.com and click on support in the black box. There will be a shout-out for supporters in episodes. This is a shout-out to supporters, Tweet Coleman, Dan Capellan, Ed Williams, Alvin Stenzel, and major supporter Dr. Craig Curtis at K2 in the Villages. We will be hearing more from Dr. Curtis with short Alzheimer's tips each week. This is Mike Roth with Chuck Formica. Thanks for joining me today, Chuck. Hi, Mike. Pleasure to be here. So you're a relatively new villager. Yes, about a year and a half now. Okay. And, and where did you come from before moving to the villages? Connecticut. We were here for about seven years every year. Knew we wanted to be here, but when the time was right, we made the move. Okay, so you were the proverbial snowbird. Yes, that's exactly. Uh, not here for very long while okay. we were here. Okay, so what part of the villages do you live in? In uh, in between the sixes. So uh, we refer to that between 466 and 466A. Oh, okay. And the village uh, is Sable Chase. Good, good. That's a good village. I think once upon a time, my improv club uh, last year did a uh, a show for the Sable Chase Club. Oh. Yeah, same lady that runs that club runs the Texas Club. So she liked it so much, she gave us a, a, a job at the Texas Club. So I understand what... Well, Chuck, you, you took my three-week podcasting 101 course, and now you're thinking of starting a podcast. Tell us about the subject of your podcast. So the uh, the challenge I'm having is picking a subject that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. and I think others would be interested enough about mm -hmm. to actually have me follow through with it on a consistent basis and have them be wanting to listen to it on a consistent basis. There's a few subjects, but the one that comes to mind is definitely the game of golf. Well, there are just a few people in the villages that play golf, and you must be one of them. I do, and my body will let me. <laughs> yes, I have the same issues. I have a set of golf clubs in the garage that I haven't used in three years, and I'm feeling a lot better. <laughs> but I haven't come to the point where I'm going to sell the golf clubs yet. So you, you wanted to start a podcast on golf. What Golf is a big area. What are you going to talk about in your in your podcast? I'm going through the decision process now for what I want the podcast to look like and then deciding whether I'm going to do it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm an old process guy, project management guy. And uh, the result of that is that I get a little too analytical. Mm -hmm. So the uh, parts of golf are really going to be open-ended. I want to be able to touch on physical, mental, and the technical aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. But I want my information that's shared to be uh, not Chuck Formica information, but uh, information from uh, other people primarily because there's a lot of people who know a lot more than I do. And my whole focus is on sharing information, helping others make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm looking to go through an interview type process for most of the podcasts. That's good. That's good. You know, my favorite golf course here is Saratoga because the whole they have two sets of holes on each green and one is much bigger than the other, <laughs> and it counts the same. <laughs> so uh, I like that a lot. And it was also near a driving range and a practice range. Uh, have you thought of any specific topics that you're going to cover in, in your podcast about golf? My hope is that I will have people that I interview that range from beginners, decent amateurs, top shelf amateurs, and professionals. I've got a bit of a network out there that I can pull from. So the topics I think are going to be different based on who I'm speaking with. Sure. Primarily, 
around those three parts of the game, the, the mental, physical, and then the technical. Mm -hmm. The uh, training that I've been through so far will help me with some of that technical, but I don't want to leave the impression that I'm a uh, instructor or a golf professional mm -hmm. because I'm not. Good. Just interviewing people who know a little bit more about golf and want to share their ideas with others in the villages. I think that's a great idea for a podcast. Probably only about 50,000 people here in the villages would want to know about that. You know, and if I was looking, if I were you and I was looking for guests on the show, I'd hang out at one of the driving ranges <laughs> and, and talk to the people who were hitting the ball real well. <laughs> it's interesting when, uh, when I'm playing with people, I try very hard not to give any pointers until the round is over and only if they want them. And one of the things that I always tell people is there's two places that you don't take recommendations from people. Mm -hmm. uh, one is on a driving range. Mm -hmm. when they've been hitting the balls same as you next to you. Mm -hmm. And the other is on a course when you've just finished a round with them. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for some coaching, find a, a PGA professional and take a lesson. Yeah, I took uh, about four grand worth of lessons a few years ago. <laughs> and th that moved me from horrible to mediocre. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go any further with the lessons. I think I was learning more being out there on the courses, hitting the ball, than I was getting from the the instructor. What kind of a format have you thought about for your podcast on golf? Primarily interviews, considering doing some other things like book reviews, uh, training aid reviews, things that primarily amateurs are potentially using or want to use, want to gain information from. Mm -hmm. I've got a garage full of training aids <laughs> and more than one bookshelf full of golf books. I'll bet there have been more than a few books on golf written over the years. My process with the books is a three-read process. I read the first time through and highlight what I think are you know, more important uh, items through the course of the chapters. Second time through, I go through and look only at the highlights, and then I write down in a bullet format what are the truly key things for each chapter and I write those down on the first page of the chapter and then when I'm done I go through each first page and I take the highlights from those and I write those at the very beginning of the book mm -hmm. and I try to use books as reference material as opposed to read it once and give it away or put it on a shelf mm -hmm. and it helps me later on when I go back to the book a year or five years later and I can see what I thought at the time was important enough to make that, that list. If I read a book second time cover to cover and it's been more than a year, it's almost guaranteed I'm going to find new things and different things that are important within the book because I've evolved. Mm -hmm. So my perspective is different. Right. There's the whole saying, you got to keep your eye on the ball. You've heard that one. So um, that's my lead into my joke for Evan. What did the left eye say to the right eye? Between us, something smells. Uh, yeah, there you go, Evan. <laughs> Bad jokes. <laughs> but that's par for the course since we're in a golf show. Have you uh, run the idea of a golf show beyond yourself and maybe your significant other? Haven't run it by anyone because I haven't made a decision that I want to do it yet. Mm -hmm. So um, on top of being kind of an analytical guy, I was also a mentor for uh, an organization called SCORE, mm -hmm. helping people get up and running or improving, expanding businesses. So I have a tendency to put everything in a... Um, in a business plan format, and I'm collecting data right now. Well, I, I always recommend to people, you got to get started someplace or you never will. And sometimes people get started real slow, real simple, and realize the project is much bigger than they wanted, and they stop. Other times, people get very successful uh, from a small start, but you got to start someplace. If you don't start, you won't, you won't get any place. But the, from my perspective, there is no golf podcast here in the villages. A. B. Golf is widely played all over America and all over the world. So your marketplace for the podcast is, isn't only the villages. It's the whole world, maybe except Antarctica and maybe Lapland, you know, those places where there's just not, not many golf courses. But <laughs> if you take that broad perspective, I think there's a, there's a market for it. Today's tip for avoiding Alzheimer's from Dr. Craig Curtis. Dr. Curtis, can you give uh, our patients a tip on keeping their brain healthy? Absolutely. My favorite tip is involves a change in eating patterns, but it's not a drastic change. It's simply increasing the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables, fish, other white meats, and lowering the amounts of red meat, sweets and sugars, and also carbohydrates. It's essentially following a Mediterranean-type 
diet plan. With over 20 years of experience studying brain health, Dr. Curtis's goal is to educate the village's community on how to live a longer, healthier life. To learn more, visit his website, craigcurtismd.com or call 352-500-5252 to attend a free seminar. By the way, what is your favorite golf book? You, it sounds like you've read hundreds. I have written a, a read a bunch. I would probably say the most impactful for me was Dave Pell's Short Game Bible. I'm not a long ball hitter. Mm-hmm. Needed to improve my scores, figured out I'm not going to do it from the tee box. So I focused on the short game and took about eight stro- uh, strokes off my handicap uh, within, I would say, four months. You mean the game of golf from 40 yards away from the pin? Or I, is it closer? I call this short game uh, actually 125 in, but uh, most in the business consider it 100 yards in or 80 yards in. I only consider it uh, 125 because um, one of my short clubs... Mm-hmm. is my 125 club and I can take a short game swing with that and and reach the green mm-hmm. so my my perspective is 125 and in and then I play my long game to take advantage of my strengths mm-hmm. which are short game and 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 putting is I wouldn't say it's a strength but it's not a hindrance either so uh how many years have you played golf over 40 how many putters do you own I own big smile from Chuck <laughs> I own three putters. Mm-hmm. The first one I bought in a uh, United Way fundraiser from a coworker who wanted five dollars for it, and it was a top of the line putter. I refused. He wouldn't take more than ten, and mm-hmm. I used that club for thir- thirty years or more. Mm. The second club I got is the one that I actually use now, and uh, that that one. I like it a lot. It has helped me in my putting. The third one I own because a friend of mine who moved here to the villages wanted to golf with me for a long time. And when we moved here, we were looking forward to getting together and and going out. And before we had an opportunity to do that, he passed away. Hmm. So I keep that one uh, in my, uh, in the trunk of my car. So I look at it every time I pull my clubs out. Okay. So the one that you use every day in golf is what brand? Odyssey. Odyssey. And, and why is that best for you? So it's uh, it's balanced uh, the way that I, I like. The um, putt stroke that I use is a, uh, a shoulder uh, turn or mm-hmm. swing. So if we think about a screen door on a house mm-hmm. opening, it opens from a central point. From a hinge, yes. And, and it creates an arc. Mm-hmm. As opposed to rocking the shoulders is more of a pendulum movement. Mm -hmm. Or it's straight. And for me, simplifying allows less opportunity for error. Mm -hmm. So I move to that stroke, the pendulum stroke, with this putter, and it just so happens, and I size myself for it, it ended up being a very short putter compared to standard length. Mm -hmm. I'm not a tall guy to start with. but How tall are you? Five six. Five six. But it allows me to to have my eyes over the ball uh, to not be uh, in such a strong hitch hin a hip hinge mm-hmm. that I have a, pro- a pain in my back. So I've had a spinal fusion and I I have challenges with my back. So this allows me to get into that position, but not for a long period of time. And I have a setup routine uh, prior to every shot, regardless of where on the course it is. And and that putter fits me is a simplistic stroke for me and i average two putts a hole and have for many years that's much better than i do i'll tell you what i do you know i imagine a letter t okay and i put the long part of the t in line with exactly where i want the ball to go and i'm on the short part of the t and then i align myself to a 90 degree angle and i take a shot that's going to be straight on to move that ball down the long leg of the letter T. Is that a good way to hit a putt? Any way that, <coughs> excuse me, any way that works for you is a good way. Mm-hmm. The um, the idea of a single way working for everyone is really not uh, conducive to uh, learning the game or playing the game well. Mm-hmm. We all have our differences. There is no one way to hit a golf ball regardless of where you are on the course. So if it works for you, 
great. It sounds to me like it might help you visualize that T. It visualizes the T and visualizes where I want the pole to go. And sometimes it actually follows the, the mark. <laughs> sometimes I hit it too hard. Sometimes I hit it too soft. But it usually right. leaves me with a, a second putt, which isn't too bad. One of the things that I learned around putting um, r- relatively early on, uh, first and last thought for, for a putt, speed. Same thought. Mm-hmm. You use the thought of what speed you want to hit the ball to identify how you want the ball to enter the hole. Mm -hmm. And then the last thought you want is speed because if you've gone through your setup, you've already picked your target, which almost never is the hole. Mm -hmm. You understand what speed you want to hit it. Mm -hmm. Take one or two real short practice strokes and just focus on speed. You've, You've done the other work. You don't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in starting your podcast, um, what approach are you using? The um, the informed decision idea has been a big part of, of my career and my life. Mm-hmm. So that's really what what I want to do is I I want to I want to look at how can I provide information from as many valuable resources to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And uh, the result of that is it, it will be what it what it'll be. Mm-hmm. So uh, the approach really is. Um, Get good resources to come onto the part podcast and to share. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, have an audience that thinks it's interesting enough, and that audience grows over time. Mm-hmm. And the audience as well. And and at that point, don't screw it up. That's right. Get started. Have you thought about what length the podcast would be? Only because of my myself when I listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. At the 30-minute mark, I start to lose my interest. So I'm looking at between 20 and 33, 35 minutes total time. Yeah, I, I like to keep these podcasts down to a maximum of 30 minutes because the attention span of Americans has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. And if you listen to all of my shows, you'll discover some of them are down at 15 minutes. Uh, uh, when I first started listening to podcasts, I was listening to equipment reviews for audio and uh, high-definition TV when that was starting up, I guess, in the early late 90s. No, the early 90s, early 90s, maybe even before. And I would Listen to podcasts when I was on machines at the gym. And so 15 minutes, that was it. If the podcast was longer than 15 minutes, many times I never got back to listen to the second half. Uh, but I did learn a lot. Okay. Equipment reviews are a good thing because you can interest equipment manufacturers on loaning your, some of their newest stuff, <laughs> newest toys, boys like to play with toys, to give an evaluation to. And I think that's a natural. Uh, have you given any thought to what your podcast start date would be? I haven't picked the date. That's mm-hmm. part of the process, the information collecting and filtering decision making. I do want to make a decision by the end of July. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I believe in is when I've got a, a decision to make, think about it, preferably write it down, read it just before I go to bed. And my subconscious seems to work on it while I'm asleep. And it's an easier process for me. I've got a vacation coming up. I plan on sitting on a beach and going through my notes and letting it sink in. By the end of July, I'll have a decision whether I'm going to go forward or not. Mm -hmm. Do you have a list of prospective guests yet? I do. I haven't contacted those people, Mm -hmm. but it's a lengthy list. It's a lengthy list. Yes. Lengthy means? Uh, More than 80 people. More than 80 people. Wow, you're going to have a lot of And you're going to release one new episode a week? That's my target is one 30-minute episode a week. Right. So to get started, you really want to do four. And then when you have four in the can, since golf, generally speaking, isn't a time-sensitive kind of a podcast, they're not going to change the size of the ball, for instance. You can record four, four to six weeks in advance, and then you have four weeks to get the next episode <laughs> ready to go, <laughs> which is always a handy thing if you're taking a vacation. Um, and the reason we're recording this today is because I'm taking a vacation at the end of June. I'm going to be gone for two and a half or three weeks, but I've got six episodes in the can that are scheduled to be released and people can listen to them. They won't know I'm gone, except, except if they listen to this show. Uh <laughs> Chuck, have you uh, thought about how you're going to record the podcast? Are you going to set up a room in your home? I have done a little bit of research on uh, sound deadening mm-hmm. materials. Mm-hmm. Not sure what direction I'm going to go with that, nor am I sure I'm going to do it in my home. Mm-hmm. A lot of the people that I have uh, targeted mm-hmm. are from around the U.S., mm-hmm. so I'm thinking that I may end up going the Zoom route. I don't plan on traveling around the U.S., 
to do the interview. Hmm, okay. Zoom route would work for some people. Uh, and many people around the country have invested in better quality microphones for their Zoom calls. So the people they're having the Zoom call with in their business can hear them better. So that works a lot better than it did 10 or 15 years ago. Um, I strongly suggest in, in a podcast, almost never, never let anyone use a cell phone. A because they're not pinned down to one place. They can walk around. I did a podcast once in my prior series called uh, Cincinnati Business Talk with a fellow who got concentrated on getting uh, business with the government. He, was, he lived in Annapolis, and he was a real good friend. And he said, yeah, I'll be on the podcast, but I want to do it from here. I'm not coming to Cincinnati. He said, I said, okay, do it on the landline. He said, sure. So the day of the podcast comes up, and he calls in. He says, I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> and it sounded every bit that way. And then he would fade in and fade out. And just... <laughs> so he was the last guy that I did on a cell phone. I know cell phones are better today. And oh, they have this high-definition audio on cell phones. And some cell phones have actually pretty good microphones. But not everyone has that cell phone. <laughs> so in uh, trying to, to wrap this up, Chuck, why don't you uh, tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you to talk about golf? Sure. The best way is my cell phone, 860-614-2734. And a quick text, if you just want to leave a comment, is great. I would be interested in your feedback. Do you think this is a good idea or not? and what you would like to see covered in a podcast. Podcast my, on golf. On golf. My target market is not necessarily the villages. Mm -hmm. It's golf in general, but I live here in the villages and I plan on staying here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. This podcast has a surprising uh, demographic. It was originally designed for the villages only. And today, I would say 60% or more of the listens happen in an area within 50 miles of the villages. But that leaves... 40% that happens in far-flung places like Alaska, California, Canada, uh, Europe, and even a few in India, <laughs> China. Uh, I haven't been able to figure those out, <laughs> but it's been fun. Chuck, anything else you want to say before we go? I look forward to the feedback. Help me gather that information so I can make my decision. And thank you, Mike, for the opportunity to be here. Good. Give the listeners a cell phone number to text to. 860 one four two seven three four. Thanks for being with us, Chuck. Remember, our next episode will be released next Friday at 9 a.m. Should you want to become a major supporter of the show or have questions, please contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. If you know someone who should be on the show, contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. We thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyrighted by Rothvoice 2023. All rights reserved.